All right. Uh, today, I think you have a great opportunity, and I actually think it may be even a historic opportunity to invest in stocks using free, real-time internet data and tools, because what has happened recently has been a democratization of financial data, and today there are all kinds of opportunities to profit from that. So whether you are a do-it-yourselfer, and you could be in about 15 minutes, or if you prefer to delegate, you're going to be able to do this more efficiently, less expensively, and generate more profits than before. So folks, this is a journey clearly worth taking. So no surprise, I'm going to take you on a road trip. Now, I'm just going to be beside you in the car. I'm the navigator, and I'm a pretty funky navigator. <laughs> and then you're going to drive, so you have uh, the keys. Now, before we go too far, we have to stop at the toll booth. And at the toll booth, we will pay a toll, we'll get a map, and we'll get on our way. But first of all, you need a little backgrounder. What is a stock? Well, folks, a stock is a skinny slice of ownership in a business. A stock is synonymous with equity, and if you take a look at Merriam-Webster's dictionary, they define equity as ownership. And the reason we all get involved in business is because we want to share in the goodies. That's the income generated today or in the future. And so, let's start with a feel-good local Stock story. We'll travel a bit south to Seattle, Washington, headquarters of Amazon.com. Shortly, Amazon.com is going to be celebrating its 20th year as a publicly traded company. In 1997, if you invested in a single share, you were buddies and partners with Jeff Bezos, who is the founder and CEO of the company. Since then, you made 600 times on your money about 40% per year. Of course, Mr. Bezos is a little bit more important than you because his 18% stake in Amazon is today worth $70 billion. Now, for mere mortals like us, you can still expect to earn about 9% per year on your stocks. That's not with heroic assumptions. And so if you are a university student in the audience today, in your working lifetime, you should be able to double your money six or seven times. That's what we call the power of compounding. Again, it's the reason we're on the journey. So now we're pulling away from the toll booth. I'm your interesting navigator, let's say that. And we are going to see on our trip six road signs. They're going to keep us on track. The interesting thing about me and the six road signs are my directions are a little bit different than the current wisdom. So, stay tuned. The first, I say invest passively. Let me explain. Active investors are those, like the bulk of the industry, who promise to beat the market in the United States, the market is typically defined by the Standard & Poor's 500, a.k.a. the S&P 500 index. A passive manager simply tries to get along and track the index. It's an automated, almost do-nothing strategy. The problem is, the active managers that try so hard with all their Harvard MBA brain power underperform the passive guys 80% of the time. That is stunning. And what they do 100% of the time is charge you a lot more in fees. I'll give you an example locally, which is not unique worldwide. There's a mutual fund company in this area. Its largest fund has over a billion dollars in it. That's a lot of dough. Over the last decade, it's been crucified by the S&P 500. And that manager charges you 22 times more in fees than the passive surrogate. So in the United States, there are almost 10,000 mutual funds. 
And there's only 4,000 stocks, by the way. And these 10,000 mutual funds collectively manage $15 trillion. Two-thirds of the industry is active, surprisingly enough. One-third is passive, but just since 2013, there has been a $2 trillion switch into passives. What I will tell you to do is this. As you go down this path, if you invest actively at all, and you're taking it from a guy who's tried to do that for 30 years, keep it a really small portion of your portfolio. And if you do go active, Make sure that your manager has what we call on Wall Street an edge. An edge means you're something special. Of course, the problem with human nature is, don't we all think we're kind of special? So be very skeptical. So our next signpost, I'm telling you to avoid what I call portfolio diversification. So... The concept of diversification, which you may have actually heard, is going to be promoted by all the investment pros, even the academics here at the university. The problem is, taken to an extreme, it actually dilutes your portfolio and can be problematic. Let me explain. In 2008, a fellow by the name of Malcolm Gladwell published a book called Outliers. You may have read it. In that book, he claimed that it takes 10,000 hours of practice to master a skill. That's a lot of work. This is my rule. I'm not going to hold you to that standard. But if you own one stock in your portfolio, you better commit to me that you're going to, every 90 days, spend an hour on homework. That's four hours per year. And the Securities and Exchange Commission, which has been regulating the U.S. market since 1934, makes it a little bit easier on you. Because on the same schedule, every quarter of a year, they mandate that US publicly traded companies allow us to see financial statements. Things like a balance sheet, income statement, cash flow statement, maybe a little color as to how business is going, and maybe even a forecast. You need to be all over what I call the quarterly financial reporting schedule. And so I would tell you, let's take diversification and reverse engineer it. This is my rule. You tell me how many hours per year you can spend on your stock homework. We divide that by four, and that's how many stocks we have in our portfolio. And folks, for most of you, the answer may be zero. And then the portfolio should be totally in passives. But you have to do your homework because the diversification concept, if taken to an extreme... Some of these institutional portfolios that I've worked with over the years have hundreds of names. And when you have hundreds of stocks in your portfolio, I bet the portfolio manager does not know what 20 or 30 of the companies even do. So don't allow your diversified portfolio to become diversified. You need to be able to go long and short. And I have these words in quotes because I will explain. Since the beginning of time, almost, even before there were stocks and stock markets, people would try to buy low and sell high and capture the profit in between. We call that going long a stock. I think you should say, yeah, that's cool, going long a stock, but we also have to be focused on going short or betting stocks go down. Here's the problem with going long. We're all going down the same skinny one-way street. The traffic is snarled, and we're getting really frustrated. In my perverse Venn diagram, we have a situation where we can open another lane. And then we also go short, so we continue to bet against stocks. Now, sure, this does not look uh, adequate for an engineer, but in my world... You can get where you're going and make money going in either direction. And of course, the traffic's going to be speedier. Here's another reason why you want to consider going short. We know that stocks go up 9% per year. We have dependable data going back to 1928 that tells us so. However, 
27% of those years, the market actually goes down. And folks, when it goes down, it can be really nasty. In your grandfather's era, for some of you students, 1931, the market went down 44%. In 2008, during the financial crisis, the market went down 37%. Even at the turn of this century, when the internet bubble popped, the market went down in 2000 and 2001 and 2002, cumulatively 63% loss. Wouldn't it have been great to have at least some bets on that benefited in that hideous environment? Also consider this for the uh, case for short selling. Not all of us is a supermodel. Sorry, guys. Not all of us is Albert Einstein smart. My apologies again. Not all of us is a finely tuned professional athlete. Take a look at me, case in point. It's the same thing with companies. Most companies that you're encouraged to invest in are nothing special. You may actually want to bet against. They could be uneconomic no matter who's running the place. And then the other thing that I see, which is a bull case for short selling, is occasionally I will run into companies that actually have legitimate businesses. But the problem is they are run by financial gangsters. And these folks will cheat on their financial accounting. They will overstate their sales, underreport their expenses, all to boost their profits, or at least the perception, so they can get a bigger bonus, and they can lure us all in. So what I would tell you is make sure that you follow both terms. Okay. The next thing is, I spend a lot of time on financial television. Usually I'm on CNBC. And what happens on CNBC is quite often they like to uh, trot out the superstars, the portfolio managers. And these portfolio managers love to get on the air, or even when they write articles, and they love to tell you all the cool, creative, brilliant ways that they search for their next stock idea. Nobody wants to talk about selling. They all want to talk about buying. Maybe it's more fun. I actually think so much time is spent on buying a stock, I think you should spend a lot of time on selling a stock. So, here's my strategy. Here's my dartboard, right? You got one of these at home? I think a better strategy is you don't worry about buying, you almost buy anything. So you take your dartboard, you add the Wall Street Journal, and this is the stock ticker page. A stock ticker is a symbol of a stock that you can trade. And what we're going to do is we're going to throw a dart at it. And wherever that dart lands, we're going to buy that stock. I don't care what it does. Today, we're buying Under Armour. I know a little bit about Under Armour, all exports, but I'm a technology analyst. And I do know for a fact that Under Armour does not make software or semiconductors. So I'm kind of out of sorts. But this is the key. It's not about what you buy. It can be Under Armour. It can be anything. It's what you sell. And when a stock reaches full value, you've got to get out of there and make sure that you don't stay at the party too long. We have the tendency to stay at the party too long, unfortunately. Hang over the next day, as you know. Even more important, however, is when you have a loser in your portfolio, Recognize that loss quickly, minimize the loss. If you're going to take away any message from my talk, it is minimize your losses, show some humility, don't go to Vegas, and when you're down, you double down because you have to get back to neutral before you walk away from the table. It's a suicide strategy. So make sure that you're thinking about selling, not buying, particularly stocks that are losers. I love this. This is my trading strategy. I call it play the pendulum. Most of the veterans, and I'm a 30-year veteran, so I don't like to think that I'm old, but maybe I am. They will say, buy and hold. That's my old man's voice. 
I actually think that you can make some money with a modest uh, trading strategy. I call it play the pendulum. So my pendulum is a metaphor for stock valuation. We all know that the pendulum can swing in a really wide arc, and it doesn't uh, stop for some time at the center. In my vision, the center is fair valuation on stock. So why don't we own a great company for maybe our lifetimes? Maybe we're owning Amazon.com. But when the pendulum swings to undervalued, we buy a piece. When it swings to overvalued, we sell a piece. What's happened in the internet world is that the pendulum is swinging more widely than it ever has and more quickly. There are lots of opportunities, undervalued, swinging through fair value to overvalued. This does not cause crazy day trading, but I think it's a, a modest trading strategy applicable to these times. Who is the greatest contrarian investor of all time? The only way you can make money is by being contrarian and doing something different. It's Warren Buffett, right? And the guy's deep into his 80s. He says, be fearful when others are greedy and be greedy when others are fearful. I think this is a 21st century internet enabled strategy to be a great contrarian investor. Our last signpost is I want to make sure that you're looking at the portfolio broadly, geographically. So I say invest globally. Take a look at this. Today, the U.S. is much smaller portion of the portfolio than you might imagine. Even a smaller portion of the world's economic output here measured by gross domestic product. So you take a look at this example. This is the world's gross domestic product. Each of these colors is a continent, and obviously we're in North America in the red. Then you have the Asian bloc, including the world's number two economy, China, in the yellow. And then you have the Eurozone in the green. The United States today, 2017, just 24% of the economic output of the world. Asia? about a third, and growing much faster, much more important. And then also you have in green the Eurozone, which, believe it or not, is not that much smaller than North America. So make sure that you in invest globally. I'm a sports fan, and so like uh, other sports fans, maybe I spend too much time watching ESPN on television. The other day I'm watching, and one of the sports anchors says, uh, he's criticizing a team calling the fans homers because they spend so much time you know, following their local club that they've lost all their objectivity. They don't see the team's flaws. So I see this in U.S. portfolios. They're always chock full of American names. The problem is that does not represent the world. 76% of the business world is outside our borders. So here are my road signs. This is our strategy. A little bit different than you might hear from somebody else, but you want to invest passively. You want to avoid portfolio diversification by having too many stocks. You want to make sure that you go both long and short, not just long. Focus on selling, particularly your losers, rather than buying. Play the pendulum, kind of a cool way to be a, a modern contrarian investor. And don't be my homer, invest globally. And I am going to leave you with an example to show you how urgent this is. If you're a student, can you give up one venti mocha from Starbucks a week? That's five bucks. Maybe you can't, the stock has done pretty well. Or on a Friday or Saturday night, can you cut back on one craft brew? Either one of those is gonna save you five bucks. At the end of the month, you're gonna have a 20. If you invest that in the market based on just Regular assumptions. That's going to be a pretty sweet cup of coffee when you're 70 years old and it's worth 350 grand. If you can give me $58 a month, then you're going to be a millionaire at 70. And that is worth probably more than what you may earn in your career, 
or even what you may earn from your corporate sponsored retirement plan. So folks, we're at the end of the journey. I will tell you this. This is not a like to have. This is a must have. It's Saturday afternoon. The stock market's closed. But Monday morning, the New York Stock Exchange opens at 6.30 Pacific time. And you should be all over this. Thanks.